Hey, in this video, you're going to learn about computer science. Specifically, you're going to learn about search algorithms, how they work, and how you can implement and use them in your Ruby programs. Let's do this. So search algorithms, a kind of algorithm that is used to search something, like the name says, like you're searching for a specific number inside a list or a character inside a string, things like that. That uh, these are search algorithms. Typically we do this with arrays in Ruby. So there are two kinds of search algorithms. The first kind is called linear search and the second kind is called binary search. So the linear search is a very simple search where you look at every element, okay? You look at every element one by one until we find the element that we're looking for or until we reach the end of the list. So we're looking one by one all of the elements, right? And of course, if we're looking one by one with this linear search, and that's why it's called linear because we start with a linear search is going to be slow if we have many, many elements. For example, imagine we have an array with 10 million or 100 million elements. That means that with this kind of search algorithm, we have to look at 1 million or 10 million or however many elements you have in this list or in this array, right? So that's linear search. So the other option is called binary search. So binary search allows you to look starting from the middle of the list. So however long the list is, it doesn't matter. We find the middle of the list, right? By getting the size and then half of the size, that's the middle of the list. We look at the middle element and then based of that, we decide if we're going to look at the left side or the right side. So basically we're splitting down the, the list into halves. Into, we're splitting down the, the list in two halves, in two lists, sub list, the left side and the right side. And that's why we call this binary search. This one important precondition for being able to use a binary search which is that your list have, has to be sorted, okay? It's very important to have a sorted list to be able to do a binary search. So now we're going to look at some examples, concrete code examples, so you can see how this works in Ruby. Okay, so I have this array, as you can see right here. So in a linear search, we will start with one, then look at two, three, four, five, right? We look all of the elements starting here and we compare it against our target element, against the element we're looking for. So we say, if you're looking for the number four, we say, is this four? No, is this four? No, is this four? No, is this four? Yes. Then we are done, right? So that's the linear search. And for the binary search, we start at, at the middle. So we will start at three. And if you're looking for four, well, three is not four. So because four is higher than three, we're looking to uh, the red, right side of the array. So we're discarding this, these numbers. And now we repeat this and we look at the middle of this array. So the middle of this that I have highlighted it's four, right? It's four, four, yes, then we are done, right? So that's the binary search. Notice that we are we only have to look at two numbers, three and four with binary search, but with linear search, we have to look at all of these numbers. So that's the difference. And now let's see the code. So first the code for linear search. So linear search is very simple. It's just a loop and it starts with the index zero. So I equals zero. And then we have a while loop 
where we're looping while i, the index, is less than the list size. And then we're going to return from this method. So in other words, we are done if the element that we're looking at right now in the current index in this list is equal to uh, is equal to n, where n is the target number, the number we're looking for. But remember, this doesn't have to be numbers. Num working with numbers is easier, but it could be something else. It could be actual Ruby objects, could be strings, something else. But it's a lot easier to do this with numbers and to understand with numbers. So we have this loop, and if the current value is not the value we're looking for, we increase the index by one. Very important, increase the index because if you don't increase the index, what do you think happens? Well, you have a loop that never ends, an infinite loop. So your program will never end. And if that happens, you can control C. Usually you can stop your program to stuck in a loop pressing control C on your keyboard that we end the program. Naturally, without the return, the loop ends because this condition uh, is false. Then we get here. So that means that we didn't find the elements, it will return false and we are done. Okay, so I have two um, method calls here to test this, to this search algorithm. I'm going to run it. And if we look at this, this list has four. We're looking for four, so it should return four, right? Because we're returning the element itself. And here we're looking for 100, but 100 is not in the list. So this will return false. So remember, this has to return four, and this false. So let me exit and run the code. And there it goes. It's four because the element itself, it's in the list and false because the element 100 is not in the list. That's linear search. Now let's look at binary search. It's a little bit more complicated, but don't worry because we're going to see it step by step. Okay, so remember, binary search is different because we look at the middle element. How does that happen? Well, to look at the middle element, we have two ranges, two indexes. Instead of one index, like in linear search, we have two indexes. One index refers to what I call low. Low refers to the left side of the index, the first index. And high refers to the le right side of the index. So in the, the case of this array, we start with low being one and high being five, right? Not five, but the size of the list. Five meaning is the value, the actual value. And then what we're going to be doing is we compress these two, two indexes. So we get these array smaller, smaller, smaller. So the middle is here. This mid stands for middle. And we get the middle like this, low plus high uh, divided by two. This gives us you the middle element, the middle index to be more specific. In this case, will be three. And then we have three cases where we're going to end the loop. Right? In this case, we have an unconditional loop. So this loop, we only end when we explicitly tell it to end. And there are three cases where that happens. One is where we find the item that we're looking for. And it's just like in the linear search, we check if the middle element, in this case, the difference that is the middle element instead of the, the starting from the first element. If it's the what we're looking for, we return it. Then we have two cases where we return false. These cases are where the middle is nil, 
In other words, we are outside of the list. We have gone outside of the list. So that means we we are done because we haven't found the item we're looking for, or the number. And the other case is where the range that we're looking at only has one item. So what that means is that we only have one item like this, right? If we are down to one item and that item is not the item that we're looking for, then we're also done with the algorithm and we can return false because the item is not in the list. So that's what I'm doing here. And by the way, this ABS, it means absolute, absolute. If you want to write that down for your note, ABS means absolute. And what's that? Well, it's a mathematical operation, math, math operation. It makes a negative number into a positive number, and a positive number stays a positive number. That's absolute. And it's careful when you are doing something like a subtraction like this, and you don't really care about it being negative, uh, because the the order can be backwards, right? Depending if we're looking to the left or to the right of the middle starting point, then it can be negative. So that's why I'm, I'm using this absolute. So absolute is used to remove the negative number. And finally, we have this conditional statement, this if statement, and here's where we're making a decision. We are deciding if we are going to look at the left side of the list of the array or the right side of the list. So the rule, the rule here is if the number we're looking at, which is this, is higher than higher than the number that we want, then we're going to make the array smaller and the, the high, the right index is going to come down. So if we're starting here at five, then we're going to make this here because that's the middle. So high becomes this index, the middle, and then the new array becomes all of that, one, two, three, right? And then the middle is going to be two. And then we repeat this. In the other case, if low equals middle, that means that we are pushing up the this index on the left. So it starts here and it will become here, meaning that it's going to be our new array after one operation. So three, four, five, instead of one, two, three. And then the middle in that case is four, right? So that's binary search. And this how it works, this is an implementation. I have different examples here because it's very important, especially when we're, you're working with algorithms, things like that, that you test different inputs. Inputs means the arguments to the method, different list, different um, target elements, right? For example, in here I'm testing minus 10, plus 10, one, five, and Every one of these needs to have different characteristics. For example, 10 is not in the list. Minus 10 is not in, le in the list, but it's a negative number. That's why it makes it different from 10, right? So I'm testing that all of these work, and that tells me that I have a correct implementation of binary search. I'm very basic version of testing, 
band for the purpose of this video uh, it works so let's just run this code and it's going to be very similar to linear search in terms of the output so 5 5 because the 5 is in there 1 because 1 is in the list remember this is a list from 1 to, five, to 6 in this case then false and false because 10 and minus 10 are not in the list. So it's working, right? So that's when you search. The best you can do with this actually practice, um, write your, your own code, write your own examples, and play around with the code. So that's it. That's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, Please click the like button for me so I know that you like it and so more people can find this video and benefit from this knowledge. If you want to learn more, watch more videos right now in this channel. There are over 100 videos for you to enjoy. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and visit my website rubyguides.com. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.